Hello again and welcome to another episode of the Franchise Everything podcast and today we're actually hire a hubby head office down here in Kingsgrove in Sydney and I'm joined at the desk today by Rod Reese, who is a franchise owner of what region is it DY? Uh, DY in the Northern Beaches. DY Northern Beaches, I knew that. Well, that's what it was. Thanks for joining us today Rod. No worries, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yep, my pleasure, pleasure. So um, there's a little bit of a peanut gallery in here watching your chat today, isn't, <laughs> isn't there? But um, so you get to go first cab off the rank, um, but it'll be fine mate. So what we want to do is have you um, in here and talk to you about your franchise owner journey, what it's been like. So I know you've got a fairly different background and past and career and everything before you got into a hire a hubby franchise and really want to understand your background in that and how you got to where you are right now. So you're not from Australia, are you, originally? No, from from England, Manchester, Yeah, um, 25 years ago. So yeah. straight out here from uni um, and, uh, yeah, came over, came over here. Yeah, yeah. so uh, what, what made the reason to jump over here? A uh, good place to surf. Place to so, surf. Good place to surf and, and find a job as well. So I'll, I'll work and surf, I should say. So Yeah. yeah. So do you, do, you, do you get do a lot of surfing? Uh, yeah, live in Narrabeen. Yeah. Live in Narrabeen on the, the beaches. So yeah. we get to surf pretty much every day. So yeah. if we go on holiday, we surf as well. And that's, that's priority, yeah, that's really, is it? It's, it's a priority. It's all about the surf. So, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So um, 25 years ago to Australia. And what what did what were you um, – now, you told me before we have a brief chat before this that you did uni when you were over in the UK. Yeah. So what, what did you study at so uni? So I did business studies, economics and law. Mm-hmm. Um, finished that in 98. And then I always wanted to come to Australia and got a one-way ticket here and – Came over, came over here with, you know, a little bit of debt, and went, went off. I went travelling, and yeah, one way ticket. What, what was the debt? You had some debt, you said. Oh, uni debt, yeah, just uh, student, student loans debt. So yeah. came over here, um, and then um, yeah, got a job. Uh, yeah. Got a job with Optus uh, back in pretty much when Optus started. Um, which back then it was just Optus and Telstra. That was that was very early on, wasn't it? Because I know. What was that? It was late nineties, wasn't it? Optus pretty much yeah, kicked off. Yeah, so this, this, it was a time when the competition, uh, the yeah, competition was really increasing. So it was a good time to get in and had some mm. great, great, great times over here. Being a backpacker and yeah. Mm. So what was it? You did um, economics and law. Yeah, you said. So what was it? Um, did you specialise in any particular aspect of it? Uh, no, it was more business studies. Yeah. So it was just, but a lot of lot of European law, a lot of consumer law. So yeah. really just understanding what you may need for. for future role in, in corporate. So. Yeah, so corporate didn't appeal broadly? Uh, well, it did, but it's, I struggled struggled really to get a job over here when I first got here and ended up working for a door door knocking firm uh, yeah. selling Optus products and for some reason had the gift of the gab. <laughs> you were getting a gift of the gab. So, what, what was the reason for um, struggling to get that corporate role here, you reckon? So I thought it would oh, really It's just got more, straight through. more backpacking. So if you're a backpacker, it was even yeah, hard yeah. back then. Was it find- longevity, whether you were going to be here for long? Oh, it just depended, you know. So, yeah. But well, it's hard. So, and then, and then, you know, you, you, I did, did get the job. So, so with your door knocking, what was it, what was that like? So you were selling phone plans or something, were you? Or yeah, what was the, the thing TV, with Optus? TV plans, phone plans. So, mm-hmm. and then moved on from there, and then gradually ended up running the company. So, yeah. that yeah. and that was was that an external contractor to Optus or it for was, door knocking? Yeah, yeah. There, was, there was a few external contractors, and then I went to work directly for Optus yeah. uh, for a few years. And then got made redundant from Optus in 2011. Mm. What, what was that? What was that? Like? What was the? Uh, was that a surprise? That, that oh Optus no, you could see it coming. So the the, the competition. Uh, so I should say competition, yeah. and you you just see the way that commissions were going. That the the good times had been had there, and it was time to start looking for a new a new role. And yeah, so what were you doing with Optus at that time? So because you did I the door to door with that other company, and then into Optus. I was back to back to um, managing the door-to-door companies. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so you basically did the oh, full circle fly, at a higher level. Fly, fly around and, yeah, just different roles and do whatever. It's like you were searching for it then go, what did I, what did I do? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, at the end of the day, though, it just comes down to targets, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the corporate world, isn't it? Yeah. You, know, you finish one month and you're straight into your next month and the targets are getting higher and the commissions were getting lower and I was kind of like, I need to find something new to do, and mm. uh, yeah. So, so was, you'd pretty much that was that was the pressure of that target stuff and everything. Well, was I, ta- it? I ta- sorry, I, I, I'd actually taken a bit of time off there to build our house. So yep. I built our house in North Narrabeen, yep. um, and during that time, then um, I got called back to work, and then we were we were offered the redundancy. Yeah. Okay. So. So it's a bit of an uncertain time. So was it was it the technology change, or was it, was all the commissions were dropping and no, everything was saying? I think it's more to do it's more to do with offshoring call centres. Oh, yeah. That would have been about that time. Just the changes it? in yeah, just the changes in commission, and obviously just making 
uh, you, uh, the company had changed ownership, changed from Cable and Wireless to Singtel, and mm. you know, trying to make companies profitable. And yep. yeah, and then that's that's how it ended up. So that's, you ended up back in Telco, though. You ended up back with Telstra. My manager got a job with Telstra and wouldn't leave me alone until I went to work for them, and then ended up back in Telco again. Said so this time working from home as a sales manager. Mm. I was a as a sales consultant manager. Yeah, uh, just looking after uh, the northwest of Sydney and the NBN connections there. And yeah, again, stuck in that. Deja vu of monthly, so, monthly targets, monthly targets, monthly you're back targets there and commissions. So you, you, uh, so you had some time off and then you submitted yourself to the whole thing again. Yeah. And then, I was just, and then again, commissions going down and yeah. targets going up and you, there's only so much of that you can continue to take. And now I've got no idea what telco's like anymore. <laughs> no, it was a long time away, ago. Yeah, so. fair, well, it's about seven years ago, eight years yeah. ago now, isn't it? Okay, so that, that obviously brought you... Reading between the lines, that brought you to a point there where you were trying to figure out what am I going to do with targets going down yeah, again. Yeah, I was looking what around. Was, what was the thinking? Work wasn't too important. Work, work and salary wasn't too important to me at that time. It was more about job satisfaction. I got a young family, so I was. Mm -hmm. My wife was working more as the the lead the lead lead earner in our family. Yep. So I was yep. more looking after the kids, but at the same time, still trying to keep my salary at a at a reasonable level. Yeah. Um, and then holidays and different things like that. So I was really looking at what can I do to support With my school family. holidays you're talking about? School yeah. holidays, yeah. yeah, school holidays, going back to the UK to visit mum and dad because we go back pretty much every year. So I need, you know, two or three weeks for that. And then I want to make sure I've got other holidays where you can spend time with the family. So it was more about a... A lifestyle change mm. more than anything. And, and this was interesting. When we chatted, when we just met for a few minutes beforehand, something jumped out at me straight away when you said, when I asked you why, why hire a hubby or why the, what you're in now, you said something that your number one priority initially was you just wanted to make sure you had your 12 weeks holidays a year for the kids. Well, that wasn't necessarily the- That, that was what that, you that, said. That, well, that is what came <laughs> up, but that wasn't necessarily the reason why I went to hire a hubby. I just really yeah. just wanted to oh, get- but broadly, yeah. I'm not necessarily I looking mean, directly to- for, for me, the sales, the sales job was becoming quite unhealthy. You're selling your- Selling your backside all day, you're, yeah. you're working, you're, you know, you're not eating necessarily the best. Not, you, you know, you, you, I don't think your health you lifestyle going, is you? the greatest there. Yeah. So for me, I wanted to get out and about and do something that was more interesting. So I think I did say to you earlier, I was even prepared to go and do, I was going to do a pool job. Yep, so yeah, pool cleaning. You said, you said you were going to be pool guy. I, was, yeah, yeah. I was ready to go and work for $50 an hour and yeah. that was it. I was off just anything to get me out and about. That's so. interesting. And then so the, you really got to that position there. So how did the – what you were in a search then for something. So how did it, how did it all come about? Well, I suppose it actually the first uh, the first um, bit of Harbour Hubby I'd heard about was at a soccer match with my son, mm. uh, with, with one of the, my son's friend's dads. And he was – I was saying, oh, I'm so bored of what I do. I've got to get out. And he was telling me about um, his next-door neighbour had just bought a Harbour Hubby franchise mm. and, you know, he was really quite happy with that. And I was like, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe not. I was not quite sure about it. I'd, I'd heard of Hire a Hubby Did before. Did you know what it was at all? Or? Well, I'd always said I never wanted to buy a franchise just from seeing and understanding some of the franchises. And I kind of went, I just didn't really look so at that. So what, what was it about a franchise? That oh, you know, just a retail franchise group and some of the other franchises that you've had in the past where maybe the franchise order doesn't work with the franchisee quite as well. Yeah, some, um, so some fear I, around it. Yeah. I was not sure about that at the time. And I kind of, yeah, didn't really do too much about that. And then the next thing was my daughter spilled acetone on the dining room, the brand new coffee table that we'd bought. Mm. And um, I'd seen I'd seen a couple of adverts in the paper for, you know, hire a hubby handy man wanted. And I'd, 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 I'd seen that there. I ended up going up to So Bunnings. the dots were starting to join well, a little bit. Yeah, I ended up going to Bunnings to go and get some uh, some varnish or lacquer to repair the table. And then yeah. when I was there, there was a guy in one of the magenta... In one of those shirts, yeah, basically. Mark yeah. Longren from from Fenchers Forest, and I was having a chat with him, and he told me about. Um, I said, do you know, do you reckon I could get a job with you? I was kind of like trying to understand a little bit about what what it was. And so, were you looking for a job, or you you weren't oh, looking, I was looking to buy for a I was yeah. just looking for opportunities, just having a chat with him. And I remember kind of going, oh, I should chat to him, should not chat to him, should. I? So, <laughs> and in the end, I did. Yeah. I went and had a chat with him, and he said, oh yeah, man, yeah, I'm always taking people on, and yeah. and then he said maybe another thing is you. you he told me about one of the other franchises that was selling um, selling his business. So that was um, uh, Chris from DY was selling his business. Said he'd, he'd been in it for a while and he had some um, health issues mm. and he'd wanted to leave. Um, and he told me about that. I went home, had a chat with my wife, and she said that sounds like a really good idea. And we were like, oh, okay, that was, was quick. Like, <laughs> I was like, okay, I was yeah. not expecting that from my wife, but yeah. Then um, we the next thing I know, I'm down at Kingsgrove, not. 
but uh, Kingsgrove having a chat with the old um, franchise manager franchise there, manager, yeah. Mike Holland, and he was telling me about the business a little bit, and you know, not, not, you know, not really. Oh, I suppose what I'm saying. So. Um, you were just digging. He, 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 was, he wasn't doing that. He was. Mm. He was not trying to sell the business. He, all he was being was quite honest with me about mm. what you know what to expect with the business, and then um, I then had a little bit of thought about it. and went away, and then we were trying to negotiate a price, and it was a bit hard because the guy we were trying to buy the business off, Chris, he had some family issues. He was back in Greece, and okay. we're trying to do all this, and I'm yeah. kind of you know I'm going, oh, I'm buying a business, and then you know because so, you're trying to get information and understand. Yeah, that was the it. Business. It was really just yeah. a kind of a case of understanding what it was. What I was getting because and, obviously when everyone's exiting they've got all sorts of sorts of circumstances going yeah. on at the same time and then luckily there was another guy there was another hire a hubby at my children's school hmm. so i had a chat with him and he basically said don't expect to get into hire a hubby and just sit back in your ass and do nothing he was like it's you know it's a business where you will have to work to to make it work for you and i was like yeah of course i'll, I'll make it work so hmm. uh and that was that and then we we we, we took the took some money out of our mortgage mm -hmm. and then Bought the business, went went down to Melbourne, did the training, two weeks. That was interesting. And how was training? What was what was oh, your impressions of that? Uh, it's a little long winded. You know, we could have probably got through it a bit quicker, <laughs> but it was. You're yeah, rating, you know, rating was, your skills pretty uh, highly. Well, not really yeah. skills. A lot of it's Salesforce. A lot of it is going through technology and set mm. and programs. And I'm like, well, yeah, I've been doing that for. So you you had a exposure to a lot of systems yeah, and everything. Kind of, yeah. yeah, but it was good. It was you know you've you've got a it was, it was all right. It was, yeah, because you got to cover a broad spectrum of people, haven't you? Yeah, skills. so that was that was fun. Yeah. Um, fun going out in the evening, having a few beers, and then finished Melbourne, and then came back. That was September. So did you feel just before we move on? Did you feel fully ready to get into the business? Holy, once really. you um, okay, once Not you're finished really. training, you huh? kind of don't know what you're doing, you're and you're kind of going. I mean, you kind of do know what you're doing, but then you've got a little bit of self doubt because you, yeah, of course, you still. I've I'd done a whole heap of handyman stuff. You know, I built two houses before then, so I had an idea of what I was doing. Mm. Uh, but still, you're still going to work for somebody else and charging for a job that you've never necessarily done before. So, and. Um, yeah, then so that was September, and then October the first, we did a, a one week uh, swap over with Chris, and uh, he showed me a few things. He showed me how to use builders. So, what's it swap over with Chris? Explain that. Chris, oh, sorry, Chris was the guy that owned DY. Oh, so okay. he did so this a, is the he did a one week handover with me. Yeah, uh, showed me all the jobs that he got. Went through it after the after a week. We did a few jobs together. He showed yeah. me just 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 went over again. Just. Um, just uh, invoicing, and the hardest thing with the job where I was found was quoting. So you can't, you don't want to underquote. Mm. He gave me some advice, which was never, never do a job that you don't want to do. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter how much you're going to get paid for it. If you don't want to do the job, don't do the job because it will just tear you apart. Yeah. So he gave me some advice with those, and then after the one, after the one week with him, um, he left me with his number and said, "Give me a call if you got any more questions." And off I went from there. It's a decent, that, decent exit. You don't get that from a lot of exiting business owners quite was, often. Yeah, no. And so that, well, that's an interesting well, process that you talk about there, that the exiting business owner takes you under their wing for a week yeah. to walk you through the business, basically. Well, he still stayed involved for another six months. I was still ringing him six months later. Oh, Chris, um, yeah. can you tell me this, mate, please? And then after a while, you're like, oh, God, I've got to stop doing that. I can't <laughs> leave stop the guy alone. Him. So, yeah, yeah. He sold it. He wants to be on and do yeah, his own thing. So, yeah. But uh, no, he was, very, yeah, he was very knowledgeable with the business, so... Yeah. And uh, knew how to quote, knew how to, knew how to get you know, mm. uh, provide the right customer expectations as well. So, yeah. So what is um? So for people who don't know, what what do you do in a hire a hubby franchise? What what is your what does your day or week look like? Can you describe it? I imagine not every week's the same depending on what jobs you're doing. Um, can you talk well, us through it? Uh, so I do a lot of real estate work now. So. Um, when I say real estate work, that can be anything from maintenance work to pre-sales. So maintenance work would be a lot quicker, maybe replacing a toilet seat, repairing a window, repairing a door, replacing a handle, um, resiliconing, gluing, tiny mm. screws, whatever it may be. All so bits you, and pieces that need yeah, to Yeah, little bits and pieces. Yeah. So it took me a while to work out the best way to manage and structure my week. So I have some admin staff that assist me with a few things here and there. When I say admin, she, uh, a, a girl that works for me, she books in my jobs, mm -hmm. uh, makes sure that I've got all my real estate work Book, booked in for one day a week, which is a Tuesday, so she'll fit in all those little tiny jobs one day. Yep. And then I'll manage my bigger jobs the rest of the week myself. Um, by doing it that way, it means that all of my customers are contacted, which is 
sometimes, which in the early days I was struggling to to, to coordinate and mm. and manage that. So as you, but now you've got used to that. Obviously, that process. Yeah. So now I've managed to delegate that to, to now. I've got a yep. bookkeeper that does my books instead of trying to do everything. So now all I need to do is I concentrate on just mm. getting up, looking at my diary, and going where am I going to do the work, and mm. I forgot and do the work. So do you focus on a particular? Um, style of work so i imagine are there, are there certain irb guys and girls that do decks primarily or that sort of stuff or do you just do all different sorts of things so your type of jobs you do um i'll do pretty much anything um so long as i yeah i'll do pretty much anything that that, that, that needs to be done unless mm. it's a bigger job and then if it's a bigger job if i'm because i'm working on my own sometimes it's easier to, to to offload that job to somebody else so i have some friends that do jobs and i may well may well um you know pa- pass the referral onto them and mm. They'll do the job for me. So how does that network work? So if there's something that, so for example, if something that you don't want to do or um, you feel it might be beyond your capabilities and you don't want to take it on or something, yep. so you, you've got to network other franchisees you connect with. Well, I know a few builders that if it's a bigger job, I can yep. put it onto a builder. So he may well uh, refer, you know, add 10% to his bill and then yep. and then I invoice for that later on. So it's more of a referral. You know, we everybody uses everybody's resources. So Excellent. And um, when you talk about you have you like to have those aiming for twelve weeks a year with school holidays and that sort of stuff to spend time with the kids, which is great. Yeah. Um, how do you manage that from a business perspective? So how do you you juggle all that? Uh, we've got your phone with you. You never yeah. on holiday, so if you're on a business, you can't. It's not like you just switch off and turn your phone off and go. So if I'm away on holiday, I don't mind answering the phone. Mm. Sorry, I'm away for two weeks. I'll be back on this date here. So you just push it all back. Just, yeah, just push it all back. And yeah. again, if there's urgent work, there's. There's a number of other hire hobbies on the beaches where I can delegate work off to them, or mm. occasionally I may have somebody that I can that, that has been working for me, it, in, which d- depends on on exactly what, what time of the year that is. So mm. I'm now looking at possibly taking a staff member when I get back because I've just come back from holidays. And Another on the tools staff member. On the, on yeah. So yeah. is that is that a normal thing that many um, franchisees do or? Some do, some don't. So yeah. at the moment, for the last six months, I've really worked on my own, but I'm getting to a point now where I'm possibly looking at maybe trying to delegate a little bit more. But mm. sometimes managing staff, I find harder than just going doing the job myself, mm. and then which can be you know can be yeah. a bit easier. So you uh so you won an award this year, didn't you? For uh, man, in van, yeah. man, in so, van. man in the van, yeah. Man in the van. So, and that, that's the difference. So, that is a single franchise owner operator without staff. Is that yeah. correct? That one, and that's the way you're in. So, then that puts you into a different echelon. Then, if you take on staff members, doesn't it into a? Um, yeah, I suppose because I think most man in the van actually will have some staff involved. It's, it's yeah, not for bits. But, but yeah, I mean, it's really man in the van two plus one and then enterprise. Okay, and gotcha. that's how the system works. But you know, you there's you can't do the job without having somebody else. So. A lot of the time you may have a labourer that comes to help you or yep. if you're in a job, something yeah, that, yeah. that requires an extra hand, you, you sometimes would have somebody else helping you. And I'll, I'll take you it you've got trust. You're not always just you. You don't physically do everything because yeah. you, you can. It's Yeah. Yeah. And you've got trusted people that you always turn to all the time. You build up a bit of a crew. Yeah, well, you get this, Pete. Yeah, well, yeah. there are, but then unfortunately, people still do let you down, which uh, yeah. depends on. Then well, that this happens in every yeah. everything. So, um, Given your success in it, and you know you're a recent award winner of um, for 2023, what what do you see as the secrets to really unlocking the success and potential within the hire hubby business from from your longevity in it? I think the one thing that I've always made sure is that all my customers are always very happy. So mm. the the one thing that I've that that I can't have on my back is rework. So if you're going to go and do a job. Um, just make sure you do the job properly the first time. And I think that's sometimes where it's, it's a little bit hard to let go and get staff to do it because if somebody goes to do that job and it's not up to, you know, it's what your expectations you. are yeah. and then and then all of a sudden you're going back to do rework to do them and then you've got, you know, the rework and the, the I find that as a bit of a, it's like a dark cloud over you. You, you know, worry like, about that? Well, I wouldn't say worry, but it's just, you know, I'd sooner not have it and focus on, you know, you know, just making sure that your customers are very happy with the work that you're doing. So. Yeah. Making sure at the end of the day that the prices that you quoted are fair and reasonable, and you're happy, they're happy. It's a so it's a win-win. Everyone's yeah, happy. Win, yeah, that's it. So excellent, excellent, Rob. Well, thanks, for, thanks so much for telling your story today. No worries. Thank you. Thanks, and that's it. This on this episode again for Franchise Everything podcast. Um, please do like, subscribe, comment, do all that sort of stuff. Share it around, and we love to hear your comments and suggestions and questions. And we'll catch you again in the next one soon.